Hello, I'm Rochelle Austria. I am an RN currently working in Methodist ER. Today I'm going to be practicing my IV skills using the simulator TW has provided in their lab. Um, and I'll see how it is um, compared to real life IV skills. So first I'm gonna go to practice case scenarios and I'm going to choose a scenario. Since this is mainly for students, I'm going to stick with students and I could either choose either medical, pediatric, surgical, geriatric, or trauma. Um, let's go for something a little more simple like medical, gastroenteritis. All right, okay. This is a student level one, gastroenteritis, I have 10 minutes. It says here a 30 year old Basically, a 38-year-old female comes to the ER complaining of nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea for three days with dizziness, chills, and fever. She's pale and clammy, and her temperature is 38.4. History, peptic ulcer disease, and she takes omeprazole routinely. Her vomit and stool are negative for occult blood, and she's only allergic to prochlorpyrazine. So highlights, altered bile signs, she has PD, she has nausea, vomiting, diarrhea for three days with dizziness. Her vitals are currently respiratory 22, blood pressure 98 over 74, heart rate 118, temperature at 38.4. So knowing that, we'll go on to the next case. We're gonna, I'm going to select a site. Since her blood pressure was low, I would go for the AC since it's going to, since she'll need fluids. Um, this looks like the IV is kind of funky, so I'm going to go to the, for the left AC. Let's see here. Okay, next I'm going the equipment selection. I'm going to choose which equipments I want. I usually go for two items at one time. First, you need two gloves. Okay. I usually go for two bioclusive dressings. I go for two bandages, two tourniquets, sometimes gauze, two gauze. You need a tape. For this case, you want a 20 gauge or above for fluids. I'll try 20 gauge, um, tube, alcohol swabs, fluids, of course, and to test out your IV, whether it's patent, um, I usually go for lock and flush. All right. So now we're going to go and do our IV. Uh, first up, we have to identify the patient, whether, you know, if the patient is correct or not. Okay, the patient is correctly identified. Then you have to inform the patient that you're going to do the IV. Afterwards, first thing a lot of people forget, you have to wash your hands to make sure that, you know, you're doing it clean. Okay, then you don your gloves. Okay, I got my gloves. And then you put on the tourniquet. Okay, I'll go for here. And then you palpate. And then I click, you click here to palpate. You could actually enlarge it by doing this. See, look, look at this nice veins. Okay, I'll go palpate here. Okay. See? You actually feel it. If you want to move it, you just kind of click. See? Okay, now I'm going to get my... Once you find a good vein, you get one of your needles. And you actually click on the site that you're going to get the IV. Okay? And you're going to warn of the stick. You don't, you don't want to surprise the patient. Okay, this is when you pick this up. It's kind of like an IV. And you see the bevel? You just have to watch this to see if your bevel is up or not. And you always want your bevel up. And for some reason, it's not going up. Oh, you have to do it slow, I guess. Okay, there you go. 
Okay, you pull the skin, make it tight. All right. And you slowly go in. until you see a flash. There you go. And then you just slowly advance the catheter. Alright. A little more. Um, okay. Now you throw this away in the biohazard. Um, you get your you take off your tourniquet. Right? Oh, yeah, you press this to let go. That holds the blood from going back. You take out the tourniquet and you throw it away. I don't know where the tourniquet went. Oh well. Anyway, you get your lock and flush. Okay. You lock it. How come it's not going? Oh, okay. And then you flush it. You throw it away, and then you can let go, and you get one of your tape, and you tape it down, okay, and you put your bioclusive dressing. We got the IV. Now we're done, so we throw away the glove, and the biohazard, and we wash our hands again. You know, because you always want to wash your hands every after certain procedures. Then let's see how we do. Let's do the debriefing. All right, we're in the debriefing. As you can see, I got a 76%. Um, all, these are what I did wrong, what I did right. Let's see. For example, let's go click on catheter buckling and see what I did wrong. Oh, see that? I inserted it, but I didn't hold the skin tight. So, see, again, I got it. So that's what I did wrong. Obviously this machine is very sensitive. Um, okay, another one, the tourniquet wasn't too long. Also, the catheter ca cannulation error, let's see that one.